Tonight's matchup in the semifinals, it's the Providence Friars and the 11th ranked Arizona Wildcats from the campus of Cal State Fullerton. Spoke with Pitts before the game, he said he's fatigued, he's tired, he's sore, but he iced up pretty much. Act. Strong night last night for Arizona. Sanderson, 17 points, 11 rebounds as Ben Bentil steps out. Things early, and his teammates weren't making shots. If they start making shots, it allows him to score. He forces the turnover and finishes. Now this is why you've got to value the basketball. Chris Dunn gets his hands on it, pokes it away. The pass was really not a great pass, but still able to corral it and then finish. Kusha to get Ryan Anderson at that free throw line. That's as good as a layup for him. Rodney Bullock, the trailer with a three. But Allen gets it back, the lock to Ryan Anderson. Here at Brownridge went for a tournament record 44 in the ball game last night for San. Ryan Anderson, you could close your eyes when he's at Boston College, and you could see the type of player he could be for Arizona. Chris Dunn underneath, posting up on Ben Bentil. Yeah, and Dunn working on the weak side. He has the size and height advantage over Gabe York. Chris Dunn, the deep two. Got it. You see how easy he can get to that shot whenever he wants. Parker Jackson Cartwright with a pretty finish. Pull up jumper and the lefty. Southern California product Cartwright is from Compton. Oh, one for Ben Bentil. Even nine minutes in. And one, Ryan Anderson. Well, the four-point lead, and Chris Dunn sitting with two fouls. Here come the Friars. Seven turnovers by the Wildcats. Pazikas in transition. It's a three for Providence. Bentel for three. And Bentel with 13 points after career-high 24 last night. Anderson in the lane. And Arizona seesaws in front. In the finish. Nice pass by Cartwright to Bentel for the slam. On ball screen, slipping screens, defense over, helping Bentel able to finish. Runs it down for the Friars. Junior LaMamba to the basket and a reverse for LaMamba and Providence takes the lead. Watch Bentel chase this ball down and his defense is spread out. Trier was playing hesitant, he was playing flat. Kadeem Allen attacks and he gets the floater. This is meant. And Ryan Anderson, a strong first half of the absence of Caleb Dunn, who were limited in the first half with foul trouble, can play free here in the second half. And I think that's really key to the level of aggressiveness that they're going to need to try to match from Arizona. Hits to Dusan Ristich, who's starting in place of Caleb Tarzuski's afternoon. And Rodney Bullock, it popped out for Providence. That hit off of Ryan Anderson's head. And came right back through. From deep. Too strong on the three. Here comes Junior LaMamba. And it's a four on two. Rather, three on two. LaMamba and one. It's on Gabe York. You go back. This is the possession before. Watch the dunk. It goes right off of Anderson's head and comes back through the iron. Yeah, that was through the net. And that's what completes it. Early here in the second half, the win against low. Michigan State. And a steal for Providence. Dunn leads Ryan Vazikas to the basket. And Providence takes the lead. Except for Ristich didn't hold his position. He didn't hold his seal. He released. And when he released, it allowed the defense to get their hands on it. And then Rodney Bullock to the basket. And it's Providence matching their largest lead of the assignment. Junior LaMamba attacks. And Providence. You got to see the play through your size underneath. Alonzo Trier to the basket. Ability to finish driving to the basket. Terrific offensive rebound by Rodney Bullock and one. On this particular play, you've got three Wildcats make it four, and Bullock just wanted the ball more. Got himself in position, draws the foul. Loose ball situation. Those are Alonzo Trier the rebound. Then lost it trying to go coast to coast. To the basket. And it spins in for Ben Bentil. Dusan Ristich. And the seven footer. Falls off. Right in Anderson with the offensive glass. Counted plus one. And just picked up by Anderson. Anderson. The follow by Parker Jackson. Cartwright and we're tied.
He was off balance. He lost control of the ball before he even went up to the rim. Trier misses again, and Chris Dunn for the rebound and a foul. If that's done, that's four. And his superstar has to sit down here for this push off on Tollefson. Has been for the Wildcats. Gabe York Great. finds Mark Tollefson, and we're tied at 49. Gabe York drives. And the rebound, Anderson underneath, and Arizona reclaims the lead. Ron Cartwright, and he rattles it home for Anderson. And here comes Cartwright for Providence. Charge on Rodney Bullock, and that's four on Bullock. The kick to Elliott hits. Anderson's there again for the Wildcats. Ryan Anderson with a bucket. He just wants it more than anybody else right now. We had in the first half is the same question you have right now. Tucson, let's take a look at the two fourth fouls called against Dunn. This was called against Dunn as he's working over to get the offensive rebound. And then Gabe York was still moving right there for Arizona. Pasekas answers with a three. In and then relocates as the ball enters the post, and you see Gabe York turn his head. The winner gets Michigan State Sunday night as Chris Dunn returns to the game with 5.15 to play and four fouls. Chris Dunn, the lob, Ben Teal finishes. Up top, starts to drive. You see the defense collapse over, and Ben Teal has his hand. Offensive rebounds to just six for Providence. The differential 20, 26 to eight as far as points in second chance. And the feed from Dunn, and Providence goes in front. And Ryan Anderson to lean in. In college basketball, like Chris Dunn, Ben Simmons is another one we talk about when they get their hands on the ball rebound wise. It's just coming up the floor and coming right at you and a beautiful floor. That's why NBA scouts are here by the dozens. Gabe York in space hits his second three of the night. Up in overtime. There may not be overtime, but these are these are game-winning moments where you need big players to make big plays. And Chris Dunn makes a huge play for the Friars. Gabe York misses that three, but Providence lost the rebound out of bounds. They're and Mark Tollefson can't handle the pass, and a foul will put Dunn at the line. He drives. Shot clock winding down. And they stop play and a whistle inside and a three-second call. Chris Dunn, the step back, and Providence goes in front. Teal and Anderson will shoot a one and one, the ninth team foul. Elliott Pitts trying to have a hand up at all. And the senior ties the game. And for that counter attack, if you don't have a drive lane. Here's Dunn picking his way. Spins, gets it. Oh, just stop. Just stop. That is an NBA move right there. You know, Zona uses their last time out. I'm going to tell you right now, we have. Watch Chris Dunn. Comes off, two defensive players tracking him, elevates, reverse pivot, knock it down. Beautiful move. Well, earlier when Jeff Goodman was in the Providence huddle, Ed Cooley told Chris Dunn, Elliot Pitts can't guard you. Well, I got news. Not only can Elliot Pitts not guard Chris Dunn, I don't think anybody in the country can guard Chris Dunn. <laughs> and Parker Jackson Cartwright throws it away. Chris Dunn. Make it 11 of the last 13. Arizona ball. 5.6 to go. But a turnover again proves costly for the Wildcats. Turnovers have derailed Arizona all night long. None more costly than that one. And Ryan Anderson open. He didn't see him. This is the three. And the Providence Friars have come back and knocked off number 11, Arizona. And they overcome foul difficulty, and Chris Dunn takes the game over and propels Providence into the championship of the Wooden Legacy to take on Michigan State.
a lot of people around college basketball maybe haven't seen Chris Dunn play a lot. You got a chance to see him tonight. Foul trouble or not, he was the best player in the gym and in the biggest moments. 11 out of the final 13 points for the Providence Fires came off of his fingertips.